Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Keeson. With me on the show today, Deb G and Neo Positivity. This is your Daily Dose of Happy. We are so happy you decided to join us today. Now, we're still hoping that Neil can join us. We haven't heard from him yet as to whether or not he's going to come. We know he loves to come and be a part of it. So I'm kind of hoping he's going to kind of sneak into the, the studio here at the last second. Um, but in the meantime, we're going to get going. And we're, we were just talking before we got started here. Debbie, it's so great to see you back into Debbie again. Because you, you were there before. I mean, Spark that you vibe. Yeah. Yeah. Good to see you back where you are. Because I don't know what to do without the Debbie G. I love that. Thank you. It's yeah. I, it's nice to be back, but it, it's nice to feel uh, feel so much better. I didn't even know I was really feeling bad. That's, mm. the, that's the kicker. Everyone else was seeing. I'm just like, I'm fine. What's up? I'll just show you some more caffeine. No worries. <laughs> I got this. Yeah. I got this. What the hell? It solves everything, yeah. I guess, caffeine, except that yeah, well, I didn't. Uh, it just did not. Yeah. The engine was low. It, 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 it was an oil change, yeah. <laughs> an oil change. <laughs> change that out. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And we do have a special guest, guest joining us today. His name is Don Brightman. And, and Don is a podcast host, but he's also a speaker. And more importantly, I, I don't know if he has a particular title for this, but we can tell just from, from just from the short time that we've been getting to know him, he's like a happy man. He is like Mister Mister. I am just so excited about life, Don Brightman. That's who he is. So, Don, first of all, thank you for Dom. Excuse me. First of all, thank you for joining us on the show. And second of all, how did you get to be so happy, guy? Hey, solid question. Thanks a bunch, Walt and Debbie. Glad the Debbie G is back. I thought it was just a spot, but it's a whole vibe, the G vibe, baby. It That's is. What I'm talking about. That's it. Hey. Straight up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Dom, do you know what the G vibe is? What is the G vibe? Well, it could be any vibe you want. It could be the God vibe, the good vibe, but I call it the gratitude vibe is the G vibe. You can even call it the G spot if you want to go there, but that's not really what it means. It just, just say it, Walt. I love it. We're going <laughs> to. <laughs> Debbie loves finding some way to, t- to make me blush. She just goes out of her way to do that every single time. <laughs> it's part of her charm, really. <laughs> It's a but, good quality. <laughs> it is a good quality. Yeah, it, it does a lot for my circulatory system. But um, but Don, <laughs> tell tell us about you. <laughs> but yeah, like happiness, it really comes from just being around the right people, reading the right books, having the right mindset, and doing the things that'll feed and take care of the garden of your mind. And really, I've been I've been doing this probably I'd say at least for almost ten years now intentionally. Nice. A lot of it came from of course had a growth mindset bits and pieces of it but it wasn't really intentional until i'd say around the <laughs> one of the year 2012 where people thought the world was going to end and all that happened is that the us of a lost twinkies for a month <laughs> <laughs> i love it absolutely love it where, where did where did going north podcast where'd that name come from that's a cool name Ah, uh, thanks. I like to say it's cooler than two cucumbers because who needs just one cucumber? I have two and <laughs> it actually started off as a joke. <laughs> as you can tell, I love two making people laugh. Right. I got a, two are better than one. Two cucumbers better than one. <laughs> <laughs> just... <laughs> it's going to be the laughing hour. <laughs> it really is. Well, we call it your daily dose of happy for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> That's the right. Giggle. Happy for all the pappies. Yeah, look at his name. It's bright, Brighton. It'd be bright. bright. It's right, right in the middle. Is bright. I mean, it's, yeah. it's 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 pretty cool. But yeah, you know. So finish telling us about your salad making. Oh yeah, the salad making. Yeah, <laughs> don't worry. It does. It, it doesn't get tossed. It's okay. <laughs> good, good, good. Okay, I was, I was it's there, Caesar. I, I was trying to avoid that. I was trying. To. You did it. I love this. <laughs> Not trying real hard, but trying. <laughs> it was a college try. <laughs> we dropped out instantly. <laughs> we followed the Steve Jobs example, the Bill Gates example. Let's drop out. Let's drop out of college, not out of life. <laughs> and that's what this podcast is about, dropping into life, right? 
drop Ugh. into life. Oh, I love that. And guess who's dropping into life with us? He's what dropping it right here. Neo positivity. Yeah. Hello, 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 everybody. And hello, Dom. How you doing? Doing good. We're now in the stash group now, baby. We got the stashes on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. That's right. We got the chocolate and the caramel on the bottom. One with the caramel stash. One with the chocolate stash. Be in this. That's right. <laughs> yeah, you make it happen. It's not, you know, Snickers just comes out like that. You know, the best one. Ever. <laughs> Snickers is the best candy. You know? Oh, shit. From cucumbers yeah. to Snickers, I'm in. Let's roll. <laughs> oh, this, this, this is one of those episodes. Oh, all right. <laughs> You have no idea, Neil. This is like this is the original Daily Dose of Happy all over again. This is like this is going to be great. You know what? At the at the risk of, uh, I'm assuming I'm the most positive guy. You guys know at the top, the non mustache uh, beard crew. Um, <laughs> at the risk of not tarnishing that, I almost didn't come on today because ah, I was I just was not Neo positivity today. Really? Wow. I What's woke up. On? I woke up yesterday or the day before my crypto account was at two and a half million dollars, which obviously is a nice thing to wake up to. Um, and today I woke up and it was at 2.9. So obviously, you know, that would all be good, but I ain't smiling as you know, I'm smiling, but it ain't here. So yeah, there was some foolery, uh, going on and it's just, oh. it's just, but that wasn't it for me because I got to sit in my head thinking it was real for 48 hours. And you would think I'll go around and start buying stuff. But when I looked around, I already had kind of everything. Like I've already mm. set my life. You guys heard me say that before. Like I, the things that I love to do, like flying remote control airplanes of the sizes I like to fly, I have the best one on the market so that I don't have to upgrade and then be stuck with two taking up space. So that didn't. There wasn't much that I needed to buy, but what got me today, I was just like, why is it? Th it's these narratives, you know, uh, I, I follow the same trend as the Philadelphia Eagles, my favorite football team that I followed my whole life, you know, do just better than normal, but not there, <laughs> you know, always and it's like it, and it just started flushing flooding back all the memories i stood in line for four hours for the iphone one i got it home and out of the 90 million people i was the one of the thousand whose stuff was broke mm. you know who had to return their phone and wait two weeks same thing happened with the iphone two and anything that costs a lot or means a lot to me, I guess I should say. Not anything, but a lot of things. The first one I get is often broke or needs to be returned, so I don't really get to enjoy it for the first week. And it seems to be this kind of repetitive narrative that's like either you get it and it's broke or you do just good enough to do above average, but we're not going to give you or you're not going to earn or achieve that level that you want. And it just seems to be a repetitive theme. And when I get to my breaking point, I actually set myself aside and I have a, a FU conversation <laughs> with whoever the hell's listening. Uh, Cause sometimes you just got to let it out. And usually the next day is amazing after that, by the way, I suggest everyone tries it, but nah, man, it was just, it was just really messing me up today. And I was like, you know what? LOA today is usually makes my day so much better. And that wasn't enough to get me on. Wow. It wasn't. You were really in a rough spot. Yeah, it took me saying, you know, I didn't know if Debbie was going to be here or not. But every time I'm on this show, I learned something new from Walt or he says something so profound. And I say, you know what? Maybe the answer's in this episode. So let me just go. And, um, you know, I, I, I looked in the mirror. I said, all right, time to put your big boy panties on. This is it. You know, <laughs> all, all the complaining about whatever is, you know, many dark alleys as I done ran down chasing bad guys with guns that are twice my size. Uh, there's a point where you're like, oh, oh let's go. <laughs> and that was it. You know, I had to, I had to strap everything back on. I don't want to, and I, and I do that with the universe when I'm talking to it. I don't want to seem unappreciative. You know, I've been retired since I was 28. Who the hell gets to say that? I'm mm -hmm. flying all the time. I live a great freaking life, but part of my FU conversation out loud with the mirror and every, all of my neighbors who I hope weren't watching. <laughs> <laughs> It was just like what I've gotten compared to what I feel I deserve because mm -hmm. of what I've contributed 
positively versus what some douchebag rapper who's 16 and hasn't done shit in his whole life except sold drugs and maybe robbed a couple people is a million. Like, it's like, it's that. Yeah. All that wrapped up. Got me here. Go. Wow. (laughs) I I don't think I've ever seen you in a space like this before. You, you, you're in a rough space right now. Well, let's just there, but I'm still up though. I'm still up. Yeah. You're perfectly human. I love your perfectly yes. humanness. And that's rock star. That's rock star, dude. I'm curious if how's how's it working for you right now to be in that space? What do you see it? I love you just the way you are, right where you're at, even when yeah, you're that speaks like, for me like, too, like, by the way. Like, yeah. You're in I'm a shit say, belt. I'm gonna say this. Sorry, Dom, for hijacking your episode. Uh but I will say this. I, I slightly feel high. In a sense that, I, I don't know how to describe being high off of weed, but it's kind of like you're behind yourself. Sometimes you could feel like you see what you just said for the first time. It's it's a weird dimensional feeling. I'm, and I noticed it right before we got on the live I, that I was in that space. Like, I didn't smoke. Why do I feel like this? Um, so I'm noticing that. I don't know what that is. Maybe you could shine some light on that. But as far as, like, I couldn't stay down. I had my FU conversation and like every FU conversation I have with the universe, I ended up smiling and laughing in the, in the end because I have, I, I live a very blessed life. And for me to spit on it like that is just stupid. And that's not me. And so, and I, and then, you know, I got my four year old, it's me and him all day, every day. And he's my world. So it's just very hard to stay in a negative space. So I'm back up. I'm happy. I'm positive. I'm thankful for everything, but I know. Just like when you have a family member in the hospital and you're trying to stay positive, there's an underlying something in here. Mm. That's like still right. pissed off. Mm, mm, mm. Still pissed off about this two point nine million dollars, mm. and then all of the instances before that. Mm-hmm. And I look at everything like, what did I do to manifest that? What am mm-hmm. I continuing to do to continue to manifest these types of situations? I know it's within my grasp. I know I'm going to have it. I've already seen it. I'm totally 100% confident that I will get to that level and then plateau past that because I'm going to set another one past that. It's just what I've been doing my whole life. So I get it. But at the end of the day, it's the waiting game. And if the wait is torture, if me waiting to achieve such and such, not because not knowing when it's coming, I know, I know it's coming, not knowing when it's coming or how long it's going to take, or if I'm on the right path, or if I could be doing something to make it come sooner, more affirmations, changing specific narratives. All of that is still in here underneath. I feel like, I feel like I'm holding the stomach muscle right now, and I'm not. I'm going to help you. Sure. I got one thing to say. And then I, wanted, lo- I would love to hear what Don wants to chime in on this. Ready? Me- no. There's no win, W-I-N. In when, WHN. That's it. Feel me. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Feel me. You feel it. Feel it. There's no when and when. That shit's bullshit. Excuse my mouth. That's, that's like, there's, that there isn't, shit. there is no when and when. I don't care who you are, what, what it's about. It isn't. There's no presence in it either. And the present is in the, the pres the gift is in the presence. That's it. And you know that. What it is is that attachment to the way that we think that something needs to look. And when it doesn't look that way, we hate that. But is it really true? Is it really true? What, what my initial answer to that is. It's crazy because I'm such a patient person. I'm such a patient, but it's, you are. it was like the money was there and then yeah, it was yeah. not. It sucks, you know? right? Yeah, I bet but that's fucked for a minute. The the repetitive cycle, that's something that's real to me. Because mm-hmm. I lived it over and over and over again. And that's what's hard to let go of. Because out of despite all the personal work that I've done, listening to you guys, listening to everybody, constantly changing and upgrading my, my mentality, there's still something going on that's manifesting this cycle. Come on. Like I've done so much and, and this bullshit, like I'm so much bigger than this. It's, it's just like me fighting an ant. Uh, Loki said it in the Avengers. He said, do you, ha- do you have quarrel with our planet? He says, does an ant have a quarrel with a boot? <laughs> no, there's this, that's how far beneath me this shit is yet. It's still here. And it's just like, come on. 
I got you. I got you. You know it. I got things I want to say, but I, like Debbie G, I want to hear what Dom has to say. So, Dom, we're going to bring you into the conversation. What do you have to tell Neo? Yo, my man, Neo Positivity. Love the freaking name, man. And Thank you. Thank with, you. And with everything, like the whole thoughts become things thing, like somebody out there thought some nonsense was going to happen, and it happened. But the good news is we can think of some positivity that can happen after the nonsense that will also will happen, like, I'm pretty sure you, you know, man, like <laughs> in this lifetime, there's going to be valleys and victories. And we have to sometimes go through that valley, valley before we get to the victory. And it, and that valley experience feels longer than it should. It feels a lot longer than it should. And it takes a lot longer than it feels like it needs to take. And heck, even actually, this happened, even happened in my own life back in 2017. It was going to be my year of focus. And that was the year I was going to get this special certification. And I was on the verge of having enough money and planning everything to happen. But sadly, my father passed away after a long battle with dementia in March mm-hmm. of that year. And that set me back. And I had a bunch of anticipatory grief because for years I was one of his caregivers. Like we were expecting the day to come. It finally came and everything happened the way it did. It could have never happened any better, to be honest, because I'm out in Baltimore and we do get snow during the winter and we had a nice little snowstorm after he passed away. Everything was planned well. A lot of family showed up, but I still had some grief I had to deal with that year after it happened. Like, cause the thing is, no matter how well we prepare, no matter how good we think we are, there's always going to be something else that is going to test us and show up to see how bad we want something to happen. And yeah. it's always the darkest. Before dawn, so my man, like the light's coming, man. The light's coming. And don't worry, it's not going to be a train. It's not going to be God. a train. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just put that in there because I know somebody always has that line. It's like, yeah, it's light at the end of the tunnel. It's a train, baby. Tell me not. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> I, I just, I, I never heard that. That was a good one. <laughs> that was really good. I just want to, I want to share uh, both of you, both of you gentlemen. Dom, I just want to extend my empathy and compassion for that space that you just share so vulnerably. It is, it's, it's a true space. Mm-hmm. Um, it, we, when, even though we know it's coming, when it comes, it rattles our earth. And I, and I do, that's it. it does. But empathy for both of you right now, no matter where we're at in the human condition, it requires we show up and love each other just as we are. Yes. And for those watching, listening, and here right now, I just want to offer that we do that. We show up for each other. And my next shift is going to be, and who can we show up for besides ourselves and besides those that are sitting right here? When we get too much into our own stuff and it's all about us, it doesn't leave any room for those who need us. Mm-hmm. And what I'm guessing sometimes is, that that's more important than anything else happening. It's a shift of perspective. It's a shift of knowingness. You can choose to see anything the way you want to see it. Period. End of fucking story. Story. You <laughs> have we'll drop them all today. You might as well just go. It's <laughs> Friday. I mean, it happens without on Fridays. Dark, that's all there is. Like, that's why we do this show on Friday. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, there's they don't dare get me on. Yeah, that's right. Without your dark, you wouldn't know your spark. Own that. Feel it. Get it. Know it. But the fact is, the only thing that's ever gotten me out of my flunk is being there for someone else, period. Because it shifts everything. You guys know the law of reciprocity. Mm, sure. All right? So what do you want? Do you want to talk about where you're stuck or where it's at or how it's not moving or it keeps showing up. It keeps showing up, and now you see it. Once you see it, you can't unsee it, so now you're going to change it. It's called one's awareness, one's mindfulness. You get to choose. You get the choice now. And when you do try to pull some shit next time, it's going to go, eh, not going to work, because you won't allow yourself to do that. Mm-hmm. I'm like, go oh, with this. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Done. Psh, done. I don't need to go down that route. Who can I be of service to? Who may be in gratitude today? Who can I show up for? I set the intention to go forward with unconditional love to the best of my ability. Who may I be of service to in gratitude? That's my intention. Yo, you know what's crazy? What's crazy? And I'll tell you the whole narrative as it was going on in my head. 
I said, um, maybe I'll get my answer from the show. And like I said, I didn't know if Debbie was going to be here today. And so it was kind of like I put all this responsibility on Walt to solve this issue. <laughs> and I was like, I can't do that to Walt. And I was like, and I can't even, I can't tell him now. Cause then it's like all this, you know, all the is on him. And the ego stepped in and said, well, what if you don't get it by the end of the episode? And I, and immediately I was just like, either way, I'm gonna go out there and kill it. And for me, kill it means say something profound enough to where somebody learned and is going to use it to change something in their life. That to me, that's killing it. And so when that's you said crazy. that, I was like, oh my gosh, I had that whole script happen. The whole thing unfolded before my eyes and then which led to me even coming on the show today. So I, I'm going to make it a point to script that out better than just kill it. I'm going to do it like you did. You know how you said like you release and you peace and all that. I need to learn exactly how you said that. That way I can, because when I say it, I visualize it, I feel it. And then I breathe into it. I've been working a lot with Nate Zetlis Lesnick about breathing exercises and I breathe into things now. It's an amazing thing. Uh, we got to have him on the show if you never had him on. Definitely. Oh yeah. Let's have him on. By the way, there's something else I want to throw in too, because I love everything that, that both Debbie and Don were talking about. I want to add one more thing. When we're in that space that you, you were in, that you've been in today and, and I'm not sure how long you've been in this space. The hardest thing to remember is that there are other people who are ready to help you. Mm-hmm. And you remembered that you remembered that there were people ready to help you. So reach around and pat yourself on the back, man. Cause you, you remembered. Yeah, I got to get this chair to stop moving. <laughs> <laughs> the there you go. Around is a hug too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Self hug, raise that vibration. Come on, let's get it. Okay, Dom. Dom, I love that, Neo. You're, you see, look how good he's good. Look at his Look at his Look, I know, you know what? You, we get, look at, you know, I'll tell you, I'm going to be straight. You know why I know when I get like that? I know why it is. Because I'm spoiled. When I want my way, I want my way and I want it now. And I, I, I'm, I can even stop my feet. For real. And I've had those FU conversations. Totally. They're healthy. I think they're healthy. They're totally, they are totally healthy. Seem like they're coming from a negative yeah. headspace. Yeah. And I guess they are. But at the end of the day, I always say, if you scream into a pillow with all of your frustration, by the time you, when you're done, you will be laughing. Yeah. It's just something about it. There's something and about that, it. And that was a scream. And, and if you don't scream into the pillow, all you end up doing is holding all that frustrated anger inside. Yeah, I felt it. So it was only for the, it was only an hour or so. I w- you know, and I, I made sure I put time aside. I said, you know what? I'm going to release this into my recorder. And because I recorded the whole thing. Um, and it, it, it definitely released it. Definitely released it. And right after that release, I clicked live and absorbed. And I'm, I'm no, I'm now absorbing still. So let's get it. Keep on absorbing. Give me the best you have. I'm, I'm absorbing right now. All right. Well, let's, let, let's go back to, to somebody to absorb from because this guy, Don Brightman, has a ton to absorb from. He's got the story that we're still waiting to hear. So, Don, tell us a story about Don Brightman. Oh, yeah, the story. Oh, yeah. He's in sponge mode. This is going to be fun on the bud. But, yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Fun on the bud. I got to use it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. That's right, indeed. Don't worry. Whether it's honey involved or just regular hamburger bun or vegan burger bun you know got to keep everybody involved got to be inclusive and all that good stuff but yeah story of dumb yeah so basically a church boy who grew up in the church and if i wasn't in church i was usually playing my friends in the neighborhood and being in school and funny enough probably like in the middle i'd say i'd say like i was kind of like the like the intercontinental champion i was like kind of in the middle i wasn't like the straight a student like always getting the straight a's but pretty solid guy and Went up through the ranks and just got better as the grades kept coming along and even went to a Christian private school where they basically beat the life into you, metaphorically speaking, because 70% of your grades will be based on the test you would take. And I hated it at the time, but looking back, (laughs) it actually prepared me for more good stuff to happen because (laughs) life is really a test that gives you the lesson after you go through the test. And I guess that's kind of the theme for today's episode. The classic example of the two by four from the universe hitting you in the back of the head. It's how you learn the lesson. Then you wake up. It's like, oh, you blocked the two by four with your hand and I get to move on to the next two by four. And the next two by four for me (laughs) was actually 
in my penultimate semester back in also the one for year 2012, where I was about a good semester and a half away from finally getting my IT degree. And it was on my 21st birthday. And after getting some gas in my car back when gas wasn't <laughs> past the honor roll, <laughs> where, where it was actually on academic probation back in the ones and twos. <laughs> <laughs> the dark streets were still wet and I was making a left turn <laughs> on my way to IT security class. Brick jammed into my car, car crashed and <laughs> trap was backed up for 90 minutes. Luckily I got out a okay, but still had some other stuff to deal with going on because the month before that, that was actually when we discovered my dad had his darn Alzheimer's because he went out for a drive and he got lost for a good 36 hours. And when wow. they found him, the police found him driving on the opposite side of the road. Ooh. And after that, it was like, all right, well, good thing I got my license a couple of years earlier to basically pick up the slack because my mother, she was sick as well. So basically taking oh. her to her doc's appointments now while making sure my dad's okay and then having to take away his license while also being a full-time college student and holding on a part-time job at a library where the thing is this journey of life life is going to be all meshed together we can try to separate our personal and our professional lives but at the end of the day it's not going to happen because your personal life is going to show up in your professional life and if professionally you're feeling down is pieces of it's going to show up in your personal life and that's what happened to me. My part-time job after the car accident, after discovering my dad's going through his decadence phase, his last few years on earth, got called into the office by my boss because there was a list of things where I was screwing up on some miscommunication issues with some colleagues and just basically messing up some things here and there. And it was like, oh crap, this whole list of things. And funny enough, like that meeting was actually a good meeting looking back because my boss said something that actually stuck in my subconscious mind that manifested later was that like, Dom, you're going to, you're basically going to be looked at as a leader because I held that job for five years up to that point. Mm -hmm. And we had some new staff members coming in who were hirees and they were like, Hey, if this guy's been here for five years, he obviously knows something, right? I mean, he hasn't done nothing stupid enough to get fired yet. If he's been here for five years, so might have something to learn from him. And lo and behold, that led me to go into the leadership section of the library a few weeks later, pick up one of John Maxwell's books that changed my life for the better, became a voracious reader, fell in love with the reading again, because school gives you books that make you hate reading. But if you can discover <laughs> that you don't have to <laughs> read books outside of school, then that's when the growth really happens. So been on this wonderful journey ever since, reading books, eventually writing books and now, not only writing books, but interviewing other folks who write books as well and just being a champion for the written word and encouraging people to, hey, not only read great books, but also write great books and join the business of immortality by writing your work and putting it out there. I love that, business too. Right? Can, immortality. I, I, I want to just jump in because I, 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 well, I just interrupted you and I apologize. No, that's I right. That. Dom, that is so awesome. I love this journey. I love how that you did it. You jumped in to write this book. Literally today, I've had like five different things up in my face. Write the book. Write the book. Oh, look, you can write the book and like, write the book. And I'm over here. How did he say that again, Neo? Immortalize. The, the business word. of immortality. Mortality, I like that down. The business of immortality. Immor I like <laughs> okay. Okay. So. Talk to me about that process. I, I just want to know a little bit about the process of the writing, because here's what I find that I want to look for an AI like Jasper or something like that to hear me talk. <laughs> I, I don't actually want to have to sit and write it because I talk and I just like being honest. I mean, having it come out through here versus here, you know, so how did you just sit there and actually do that process where you're typing and you are allowing that flow? Ah. Uh. Great question. And it was interesting for me, right? The writing process it involves the same thing writing for everybody, but everybody goes about it a different way because there's a lot of folks that say, Hey, write every day. They read the Stephen King book on writing. Like, Hey, write 500 words of crap every day. At the end of the day, you'll finally get the good stuff to come out. For me, it was a little different. It actually involved me being dared to write a book after 
doing my own activity of writing my own obituary where I mentioned in the obituary mm-hmm. I was going to be a published author. And a few months after that, in a networking break, networking with people, handing out these reading lists to people called the 100 Books for Dynamic Living and putting my contact info at the bottom of the list because business cards, let's be honest, they end up in the trash or forgotten. And a reading list, it's like you don't see that every day. Hey, you read this. Oh, this looks like a good book to read. And voila, one lady handed the list to. She looked at the list and asked me where my name was as an author. And she dared me to write a book. At first, I was like, no, I'm not doing that. Even though two months before, I said I was going to be a published author before I die. <laughs> Go figure, right? And that's the thing. Sometimes with the writing journey, we can sometimes, well, not just writing, but life in general. We can be our own worst critics, our own worst enemies. We live with ourselves from the cradle to the grave. We lead ourselves the longest, and we know a lot about ourselves. Also, not a lot about ourselves as well, because sometimes we need outside influences, outside voices to remind us of our own inner greatness. Like, you can't spell Debbie G without greatness, right? So basically, Ooh. you have to love it. tap it to yourself and just put thoughts down. You have to ink it when you think it. So for me, a couple of days after being dared to write a book, again, I was challenged in a Q&A session of a speech I was giving. A friend asked me, hey, when are you going to write a book? I didn't want to look like a punk on stage because there's a moment of silence. And I'm like, dude, why would you ask me this question when my speech had nothing to do with book writing? <laughs> so... After about a good, it felt like, it looked, it felt like an hour in my head, but probably like five seconds while I was on stage. And I was like, all right, a year from today, I'm going to write my book. That was like November 2015. So ran home, wrote 14 pages of raw content. That became the last chapter of my first book, Going North. Mm-hmm. Went through a metaphorical hibernation phase for about a good month and a half for the rest of November and December. Then January picked up the book again, where I wrote down an outline of what I wanted to basically cover. And then every weekend after work, I would go to a coffee shop, Starbucks or whatever, and put a thought down at the top of the paper, like, okay, leadership, here's all my thoughts about leadership. Time management, okay, here are my thoughts about time management. Just go through each topic and each phase and just write things down, whatever came to mind, and just keep going from there. And also having a pen and paper with me everywhere I go, and also having your recording app on your phone ready to record your thoughts, Mm -hmm. because you have to be ready to ink it. When you think it, because thoughts sometimes come at the most inopportune moments. I, I remember I used to do CrossFit at one point, and after two hours of being baptized in my own metaphorical sweat, I had an idea <laughs> for my book, and I ended up writing that down and had a notepad next in the glove compartment, pulled that out, and just started writing down at least nice. a good five pages there. So what helped me to get my book down and my writing process was I basically had to put down an outline and then write down my thoughts about each different topic from that outline. And then as I was actually, and I was literally writing this, I didn't put, I didn't carry my laptop with me at the time. Then I would actually type it in and transcribe it later. So that way, when I'm looking back over what I wrote, I'm like, what the heck was I wrote writing here? Like it, it kind of, I felt like neo positivity or it was like, I don't smoke, but it's like, is this what it smells like? What the heck was I smoking when I wrote this? <laughs> and it's like, you're polishing your work ahead of time. You're basically editing yourself as you go along. And then once that was all said and done, I basically had a year to get it done around August. I basically had the draft of what the book was. My goal was a hundred pages. But I didn't have the 100 pages. I had a goal to finish and reach. So I figured, hey, let me go with what I have. Sometimes you have to go with what you got to get what you want. And that's what I basically had to do. So basically, I had a deadline. A deadline can put a dead end on procrastination. I had an outline, basically an outline of where I wanted to go. And be forewarned, an outline doesn't have to be final, but it's a great way to focus yourself. So I have a deadline. And an outline, and then put yourself on a line by always being ready to absorb the information that may come your way and ink it when you think it when it comes along. Like LOA today, law of attraction. Sometimes when you write things down, things will definitely tend to happen because folks will come up to me every now and then and books will come up in conversation. So those three things. So have a deadline of when you want to get your book done, have an outline done. And be open to editing as you go along, because at the end of the day, you're going to be growing as you're going along with this project. And then put yourself on the line. Always put yourself forward. Focus on doing things that will help get that project done. Yeah. 
And it, it feeds itself, doesn't it? I mean, that's my experience with writing that when it, especially when, when that really great idea, you talked about having that recorder on hand so you could just, you know, record right there or write down right there this thought that had come to you. When you get that inspiration, it's, I don't know about you. For me, it's, I, I can't wait to get to the keyboard or whatever my mechanism is for recording this stuff because it can't come out fast enough. Mm hmm. And you can't write. Or type as fast as you could. I could type pretty fast, but not as fast as I can think. Right, exactly. And backspace is a is a B. Because <laughs> I can't help but fix that letter. <laughs> Even though I know autocorrect going to step in, sometimes it doesn't. You know. You have to learn to. That, you know what, Neil? I swear to you. I promise Perfectionist. you. Perfectionist. Let go and let flow. Let go and let flow. And if you have a little bit, allowing yourself to have an error, you know it's fixable. That maybe that's your, it's always fixable. There's never anything, right? I need okay. to work on that. I swear to you. I, I promise, honey. I swear to you. In my almost 55 years, I have lived it and proven it time and time again. And I'm still here breathing. That's why you know it works. <laughs> okay. Seriously. Dom. Okay. So I got you. We got to, if you're, if you, you've got to ink it when you think it. You have to make, you have to get your, uh, topics down. You have to, you know, the points of interest that you're going to be writing about and make an outline. Okay. And I love that. I love that. What's your thought on going pen to, or brain out uh, writing, handwriting instead of the computer? Do you think there's any difference with the two? Cause some people say that you write better when you do the writing. I personally think it's more work. Personally, from my experience, the handwriting is better because it's more personal and not to mention it sticks with you a lot longer because the thing is the keyboard, you're looking at the letters if you're not really good at keyboarding and mm -hmm. with writing, like it's really coming from your body onto the paper and then you get to go back and look at it later. And plus when it's on paper, there's a good chance it's going to stick around longer because sometimes <laughs> one of those God forbid moments, you may write it down in a Google doc or an email and then I don't know where you try to look at it later on your another device because it happened to me <laughs> once where I took down a bunch of notes on a piece of like not a piece of paper, but a, like an email on my phone. But when I opened it up in Gmail on my laptop, it disappeared because it was on a different tab. I didn't close it fast enough and I lost it. So that's <laughs> the other thing, too, about writing things down, because not only it stays with you a lot longer for personal, there's studies out there that still need to confirm about this but there's studies out there that handwriting when you write things down sticks with you a lot longer as opposed to just the typing and plus it's more personal too you know give your hand a nice workout for when you eventually have to sign those books that you publish <laughs> I love, oh, nice nice uh nice close on that i got yeah you. that was beautiful when i and i love you know i know that this is true because I had like all these gratitude state you know like sayings come to me my favorite one and i i'll i I did. I was writing it though. It was, uh, joy is gratitude's belly button. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> True. I like it. I guess it's an Audi, huh? <laughs> <laughs> she caught it. <laughs> Cause joy is flowing out, baby. <laughs> it is. And it comes from within. <laughs> I don't think we've ever had this much fun with a belly button before. This is really something, I have to say. I think I got my answer. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. It came before the belly button. Um, <laughs> Pun intended, right? <laughs> it was <ass. laughs> Well, there are people who meditate on belly buttons. Be, you can't oh, be man. in the... You can't be in a flunk if you're laughing. That's impossible. It can't. It's true. <laughs> Sh shift that the was frequency. The, that was like, that was the, it was like I had muck all over me. Like the slime trail. <laughs> Walt knows that's like a slimer <laughs> from uh, Ghostbusters. He just hits you and you're stuck. I, the laughter was like a flow of water hitting me. <sighs> yeah. But there was still it some slick slime on my skin. <laughs> well, it takes a little while to wash it off sometimes. I just yeah. had a release. I just felt like something was lifted off nice. my chest. Yay. Tom said something about outlines. All right. And 
Well, you know, I've been working on a master outline, law of attraction, start to finish everything I've learned in the last 14 years from everyone I've interviewed, everything that's worked. Right. Um, and I put it all into this presentation and the presentation is, is nothing without the outline because I just use the outline and then freestyle each, each bullet point. Basically I freestyle it. Uh, so I'm not speaking of the speech that's been spoken that I've done 15 times, but put it all into the outline, all the fuego, all the fire, all the, the pain, the good, the bad, everything. I wrote down everything I got, put it all into that outline. That outline is going to be what leaves my mark on this planet. My full description of how I use the law of attraction, what I've learned. So when, as soon as I accepted that just now, it was like this weight was lifted off my chest. Nice. Everything, the $3 million, the waiting in line for the iPhone. I just felt like it was all lifted. Wow. And I feel like I'm back to being my, that my God self. Your true self. Yeah. yeah. So I love that. I'm putting it all into the outline. Yeah. I love it. Oh, yeah. Uh, by the Super way, I'll be performing that on July 8th. So please stand by for that. <laughs> now that I'm home, thank you, Neo, because I needed that reminder. I was on the road when you texted me. So I'm going, we're all going to be supporting Neo in his upcoming talk. Please uh, look at my page and also all of the other links. Wait, are you going to put your link in? Yeah. Everyone watching, go and register, please. Thank you very much. Thank little you, PR announcement going on right there. That's good stuff. I like that. Oh, I have more PR announcements. Well, okay. Let's do the PR announcements. World Unity Week's going this week. And tomorrow, please watch the replay of Miranda and I on Unify Women Rising because we had a really good talk about uh, regenerative systems and how to be more conscious and aware and create sustain as we create a more sustainable planet. So that'll be tomorrow's discussion. You guys need to show up and watch it because we, we gave some cool tips on that. We talked a lot about microgreens too, which is pretty rad. Anyway, I want to go back to the writing. Okay, so Doc, then when you got ready to do your launch, what did you discover about what was your biggest moment and after that you wrote that book that you could express? What was that big takeaway from writing the book? And it had to have been big because you've written more. Yeah, uh, I have to say the biggest moment was probably when I got the proof copy of the book and I saw my name on the bottom of the book. Yeah. It felt like Shawn Michaels of WrestleMania 12 when he held the world championship. It was like uh, the boyhood dream. It's finally been realized. <laughs> like I'm uh, a world champion. <laughs> that's what it felt like really when that happened. I have to say that's probably the best moment for the whole, one of the best moments. Well, I'd say, yeah, prop, that was probably the itch, one of the part of the itch, one of the big three. I'd have to say the biggest moment thus far was five of the people finally publishing their books because they saw a millennial publish their book. They're like, hey, wait a second. Mm -hmm. This freaking millennial published in book and he's still promoting his book. And I'm like in my forties, fifties or sixties. I haven't written anything yet. Like, let me go ahead and do this thing. Like, yeah, that way I can say, hey, I joined the business of immortality as well. Finally publish my work as well. So, so yeah, like that, that's the other thing too. Like, Take take action today. It's going to be the inspiration for someone tomorrow, like this show. If Walt didn't start it 12 years ago, there's no telling how many folks wouldn't have been inspired because right. Walt didn't start a show 12 years ago. Like 1,800 episodes in Calden. You know how many folks wish they got to 18 episodes? <laughs> like, like, dude. <laughs> I, I say often, I mean, I, I don't honestly understand how I've gotten to nearly 1,800 episodes. I All I can say is they just kind of add up over time. But to, to kind of jump onto what you just said, because what you said I think is really important, taking that step, taking a step of action. I, I love what Mike Dooley had to say about that one time. I don't remember the exact wording, but the gist of it was it doesn't matter what direction you take the step in. The important thing is taking the step. Because if you take the step in the wrong direction, a funny thing happens. The universe comes along and says, turn around and go the other direction. But the universe can't give you that information unless you take the first step. That's right. Mm. So I love that about taking that step. That's that's big. And take it today because there's no win and win. That's right. W I N N W H E N. There's no win and win. But I'm loving this because looky here. I'm supposed to do this, and I know this. This isn't, and I have known this. So now it's it's just one of those things. I we have. 
I've got some cool experiences to pull from. That's the only reason I understand some of the things I understand. I don't know squat, but I understand certain <laughs> things. You know, I you, you know under- a lot more than that. I can tell you that for yeah. a fact. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've been really grateful to have had some experiences that a lot of people look at and go, oh, it's just, oh, how can you, what's your life? It's how you see it. I've had juicy, incredible experiences. I'm telling you, I've had all of it. And it's important for us all. I love what you said about that, you know, to to inspire someone else. And that's why we have experiences so that we can show up for others. We're going to leave. We're going to exit out. I'll probably exit out before y'all. So I'll just be gone to immortalize that. Like Wayne Dyer, like Dr. Wayne Dyer did. I love that. Thank you, Dom. Talking about immortalizing that the, the thing that you're sharing. God, that was just awesome. I never so thought bad. of it as immortalizing. That's I'm obsessed with that now because that's a beautiful thing. The book of Eli m- might shatter the immortalization of you know that movie but that's <laughs> it's just a movie <laughs> they were burning every book on the planet uh yeah so it does tend to happen in the movies what what i want <clears throat> excuse me oh my my throat's filling up here um what i want to go back to dom is how you, you decided to inspire authors to become authors because i mean there there are plenty of people who who have written books i mean literally 100,000 books get written every year but 100,000 out of 8 out of 8 billion people around the planet is actually a fairly small number so there's a large large chunk of the population that is kind of afraid of it it's kind of on the same level as public speaking i mean you're a public speaker all of us here are public speakers and and for many people there is a a fear or or a discomfort with public speaking i think there may be like a similar thing with writing books don't you think Oh yeah, definitely. Like, although there's probably a lot, a lot of people who will probably rather write an essay than give a speech in front of a crowd, though. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. true. Oh no, 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 no! I want the mic. Give me the mic. You want the mic? I want yeah. the mic, baby. Oh God, it's over. Just hand but that. There, just hand that more, to me. There's way more essay people than microphone people. I'm definitely yeah. I'm a microphone person. I'd rather talk it. I think the reason why most books don't get finished is just because it's so hard. Once you get to chapter four and you're like, did I mention this next thing I want to say? Did I say that in chapter two? Then you go back and look in chapter two and you didn't read the whole thing. All right, I found it. Wait a minute. What was my point in the first place? That's what <laughs> filled me with writing. And the law of attraction is such an intricate, four dimensional spider web that you don't know what's leading to where or what fits places. And that's why this outline and I said I want to pour everything into is so important. Not only is it going to be the outline of everything I've done for the last 14 years since I've been retired, but it's going to be the outline for my book. And it's going to be the outline for every speech I could possibly give. Why would I give any other speech than the best law of attraction information I have? Start Mm -hmm. to finish from when you don't know about it all the way to the end. And if I catch you somewhere in the middle, good for you. But it's like, why would I not put my all into that? And so I'm so clear about that. And I love this whole topic, this whole conversation. I'm so glad I got on. Thank you guys. I just want to say that. Can't be, can't be down when you're creating, if you're creating, if you're creating and laughing as you go. But I love That's that you laughed. Nation. What did you mean by that in the first place? God, that was hilarious, dude. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dom, have you, have you ever had one of those moments? You go, what was I thinking? Or what oh, was all I the thinking? Time. Like you read, you wrote, you wrote it down, and you go, <laughs> "What was I trying to say?" Yeah. It sounded so good at the time. Yeah. Well, what that's why it's so important to go with it when you when you're really feeling it, because mm-hmm. when you're really feeling it, it all makes sense. The funny thing is, it doesn't necessarily make sense in your head, but as it comes out <laughs> onto the paper or onto the computer screen, it all makes sense. Mm-hmm. I, I had that first experience here on, on the podcast. It was about five or six years ago after, you know, after the first three or four years of talking about law of attraction, you kind of run out of things to talk about. And so I knew I needed to branch out and we reached a point in an episode where I didn't actually know where to go with it, but there was also, it was kind of like a, a blank spot, like, okay, what do we do? So I just opened my mouth and stuff came out and, and I was actually kind of terrified because I, I never listened to my own podcast, but that time I listened to it because I wanted to find out, did it make sense? And it actually made a lot of sense. 
In fact, it was one of the smartest things I'd ever said, and I didn't realize what I had said. So that, that's what I mean. Sometimes if, if you just go with what's what's feeling, what, what you're feeling in that moment and just let it come out, you don't even have to think about it. Just let it come out because you were, it actually you were tapped in. Really great. Yeah, you're, you're tapped, tapped in. in. Exactly. And when you're tapped in, you it's like diary of the mouth. You just open up and <laughs> let the much. words flow out, and it just yeah. sounds amazing. And we do it every Friday. That's we, do. <laughs> we also, you know, <laughs> I love that. And we call that in the spiritual community, they call it channeling. People think that that's some, there's something wrong with that. But you are actually, you what that is, we're, we're like a radio station. If, we, if all of us were a radio, we're tuning into the station and the frequency. So when we're allowing... How do we get the confidence to do that, Dom? Mm-hmm. How do you get that confidence? Where do you pull from to get that confidence, no confident knowing instead of, okay, cause then I say this because I've sat down to think these are the thoughts that go through my head. What the hell am I going to say that somebody else hasn't already said? Uh, or I'll say, why does anybody really want to know about this? I'm talking myself out of it. Where's that? So there's a confidence part of our writing. How do you step forward in confidence? Ah, uh, solid question indeed. Question. Yes, indeed. Solid question indeed. Hey, that's why it's WG. She's got the good questions. <laughs> yeah, that was a really good question. I've never suffered from that. But I'm, I'm trying to figure out what to tell people who do. I, I'm not sure I'm that. Literally, not a day in my life have I, I doubted you. any. Yeah. I swear to God, I believe you. I'm but not doubting you. Help other people. But I've never. Like me. Yeah, please. Yeah, I've never had a good answer to that. So I, I'm going to throw out an answer right now, and that is that you just answered it. The answer is. You don't think it, you don't Just plan do it, it, you don't figure it out, you open your mouth or you pull out your pen or you turn on the computer and you put the fingers on the keyboard and write or talk or whatever it is to, that, to express. You just let it come out. And it's, it's hard the first time because you don't really trust yet. You don't really have that feeling of, oh, something's going to come here. You, 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 you fear you're going to have the writer's block, right? You're going to sit there and nothing's going to come out. Yeah, but that's not what happens. The only time that ever happens is if you're in a bad space. If you're feeling miserable, that's when you get writer's block. But if you're feeling good, it doesn't matter what is in your head or what is not in your head. Just sit down and do it. The feel good takes over. That's what drives it. That's what makes it work. So how do you do it? You just do it. Like, okay. like Nike. Like, like the, the old <laughs> Nike. <laughs> yeah, just do it. Go. Put Dom, how behind. did you just do it, Don? How did you just do it? Yeah, for me, it actually just comes down to, well, one <laughs> one of the things I actually did, and it was kind of interesting, is that sometimes, when I mentioned earlier, that sometimes I would get in conversations where people say, hey, I'm, I'm writing a book, I'm going to publish it. And one guy even said, hey, I'm going to hold you to that. And funny enough, I, we introduced ourselves, I took his name, I wrote it down, I made a list of names I told of people I was going to write the book to. Funny enough, some of those names, I've never even seen them again. It was like I just saw him that one day, and that was it. And that's the other thing, too. You have to also realize that even though it feels good to write a book and you, you publish it, you put it out there, you market, you promote it, not everybody's going to catch on and read your book at first, and not everybody's going to know you at first unless you have a built-in audience. So the other thing is not caring what the other people think. Heck, not even caring what you think sometimes, too. From that negative place, because sometimes we, like we are all our own worst critics. Another reason why self leadership is a wonderful thing. Sometimes you just have to silence all the noise or let the noise just come and ignore it and focus on getting the job done and tapping into that place. I believe it was in the book 33 strategies of war where I mentioned the death ground strategy where your back is meta, where you, your back is against the wall and there's no other option besides moving forward. Or the classic story of Hernan Cortez where he burned the boats of his ships for his men. It was like, hey, we either take this land and conquer it or we die. You have to sometimes get into that place where it's like it's either do or die situation. You put the content out there and see who responds. And if you get positive responses, great. If you get negative responses, that's great, too, because that means someone's paying attention. Yes. And that's the major thing. Absolutely. Wow. I love that. That last bit especially. It doesn't really matter if you're getting a negative response. A response is still a response. So the worst thing is actually getting no response. Absolutely. That's, that's the hardest mm-hmm. one to live with. There's, there's a lesson in it. Yeah, there, I mean, there, there's something to learn from it, but it's the hardest way to go of all of them. So, yeah, when you get a negative response, you say, yeah, right, I got a response. I love it. <laughs> 
And use it for marketing later because that's like the yeah. funny thing about marketing books. Like, hey, somebody said this book was a good coaster. Buy this great coaster on Amazon.com. <laughs> like, it's it's do that. <laughs> this is this is it's part of my decor. <laughs> you know, tear your decorators all over. Our <laughs> it's good feng shui. <laughs> That's right. It has the right note, energy. That guy who burned all those ships, they won. Mm-hmm. But he did get killed that night by his own he men. Just, I'm just yeah. saying, he, he definitely yeah. got hurt. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> they were probably. <laughs> Well, well, no yeah. one said it was going to be easy. <laughs> that, that that too, yeah, yeah. That's kind of how we started. <laughs> with Neo, right. my man came in out the matrix, like, hey, buddy, I'm well, going well, through actually, a tough time right piece. now. There's another piece too, and that is if you want to to basically develop that thicker skin, because that's really what that is, you know, being able to handle that kind of thing. Actually, writing the book is a good way to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you feel it as you're writing it. Yeah, you feel very vulnerable as you're writing it. But if you actually can get yourself through the process and finish the book, you find your your skin is automatically thicker just because you finished the book. I got to say, that's true. With Spirituality Gone Wild, I started that. I didn't know anything. I mean, it's been this this August will be six years, five years, five years. Sorry. And. I I didn't know anything about anything. And let me tell you, the best way to get thick skin is to go on knowing. I just went on raw, real, and I just like I am now, just a, a little bit different. It wasn't worse. It, well, it was terrible, actually. But that's not even the point. It was so hilarious, me trying to be something I'm not or mm. doing. It, it was just, it was great. It was great. But you can see the whole transformation, which I absolutely love. Man, you, just, yeah. you just touched on something else there, by the way. That's a really big thing that you just touched on. It is a reality check with yourself. When you That's do totally. an activity like this, you learn more about yourself than you ever knew before, simply because you have to face your own stuff while you're doing it. Yeah. yeah. Check-ins are amazing. Yeah. You use check-ins to see if the narratives have been serving you, to check yourself, to learn about yourself. Yeah. I am such an advocate of doing check-ins hourly if you can, every five minutes, if you can remember to, and deep breathing, belly breathing, belly breathing. Who's that belly? Yes. Like Chest baby. breathing like we've been doing, sucking it in our whole lives. It's the wrong way to go. Oh, that's belly not breathing. it. <laughs> yep. Absolutely true. Well, it is true. And it helps with pain, too. I tell you guys, it does. It helps a lot because just those deep, deep, deep breaths. Um, they'll, I'm that's just your whole body. It is our cheese, our life force. Breathe. Breathe. There's another brain down there. And not a lot of people know about. There's a whole second brain in your body. And yep. it is down there in your stomach. And to take the oxygen from it, uh, it, it obviously it's not good. Oxygen has to go to your brain. It has to go to both of them. The well, more you get a... down there, the more fluent you'll be. Okay, but check this out. There's actually three. Because our heart has 47,000 brain cells, uh, par- di- parasympathetic stuff going on. If they're not, Greg Braden, I'm going to blow, I'm just blowing it, but look, check out Greg Braden, heart math, check out Greg Braden, anything to do with the heart and the actual brain cells that we have in our heart. We have them in our gut and we have them in, I mean, it is all three working in connection together all three so mind and heart coherence that's why you've got to get from here to here into your heart and we do that from our breath so you see the unison of it the breath is what tie breath ties it all together totally right feel me yeah Mm -hmm. is that cool oh yeah i'm loving loving the breath work it's so cool i'm just wondering who the researcher was who had to count those forty-eight thousand cells well, I'm not, I don't know. And I could be off on the number, but I know that it's something like that. And seriously, Greg Brady. I mean, that's a lot of microscope time. Just, I mean, counting cells. That, yeah, that, yeah. that can take a long time. Have you, you ever had a-, a jar full of Skittles and you had to guess how many was in there? <laughs> <laughs> I think they're just that's using what they the do. cubic that's inch. That's what yeah, they do. Right. They're just doing that thing, Multiple. right? It, you know, here. <laughs> you guys are kidding <laughs> You're killing me, Smalls. <laughs> I was always so off with my guesses. It was a thing when I was coming up in school. Like every week, it was a big thing. I don't know what it why. Count those skittles. <laughs> a 
Yeah, thankful. Hey. Yeah, they'd be full of popcorn the next week. It's like, look at that one. Like, <laughs> so much air in there. <laughs> Nero, I, I got, Nero's I got work at trigger with the da, Skittles. Da, Dom, you made it really clear today that, that you fit in beautifully here on Fridays. So yeah. first of all, Sweet. I want to thank you for fitting in so beautifully and, and feeding this crazy, lovely, wonderful, insane energy that we have here. You did, you did a wonderful job today, my friend. Woohoo! I'm honored. That's right. Got to add some I'm more, not. you know, chocolate to the mix, you know. <laughs> Absolutely, and I love chocolate. Oof, yeah. Mmm, <laughs> makes me feel good. <laughs> no, seriously, Shout out though, to but... Rosalie. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yes. Shout yes. out to Rosalie. Seriously, check this more out. More messages check this out. from heart. Yeah, there it is. More messages from heart to brain than from brain to heart. Cohesion is so important. Yes, it is. She's smart. Yes. She's out there listening to this while she's taking a walk, looking at nature. Yes, Amen right. to that. Now, I mean. Awesome. Yeah, it, it, that's amazing, right? There. That's dedicated. That's fabulous. But hey, we're we're nearing the end. We can't end yet because we got to find out more about how to reach out to Dom Brightman. So, Dom, first of all, tell people how to find your podcast, how to find you, how to reach out to you if they want to ask you something off the wall. How do they find you? Yep, sure thing. Well, the good news is if it's off the wall, it could be on the internet all on dombrightman.com. That's dombrightman.com. There's also a free gift for foes who sign up for my wonderful newsletter called the 21 Lessons Learned from Two Plus Years of Podcasting. 21 Lessons if you want to learn how to start, manage, grow a successful show. And hey, I've interviewed over 500 authors, so that means I must be doing something right. So check it all out on dombrightman.com. Did I spell it right? Yes, sir, baby. Neo positivity has got it right, baby. That That's is. what I'm talking about. Five. I'm sitting here sitting 500. That yeah, is, I was I looking mean, at that before I got on. I said, yo, he's, he's I think he's five, close to 600. Man. That's, That's awesome. A job. That is a job well done. Thank you for everything that you do, by the way, with, by doing those interviews, by inspiring people, by encouraging people to write their book, to leave their written legacy. Thank you for that. That's an important role that you're playing in life hey i'm honored and thanks for having me on the show too that means something's happening right <laughs> it is it, it, it was right from the moment that you picked up the mic and connected it in i mean it's been right the entire hour so definitely i have to say this is a special episode i I've, I've never come on here and just vomited all over <laughs> you guys <laughs> i'm usually positive from start to finish so the fact that you know, the universe put us together for this episode. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. So, I, And you know me, I like to look deeper into that. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to connect with you, Dom, and see what, where our futures can converge, com- collide. It's storming know. out here. It's got dark out here quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. Well, Black plague. Let me stop. <laughs> nah. <laughs> I like that. I feel like every now and then I, I send out these super energy waves to the universe. And I know it's making big change. And I think the greatest way a universe could change a large group of people at once is to make it storm real quick. Mm-hmm. People are staying home. They're making different decisions. And so I see shifts coming. I like it. All right. I love it. I love it. Well, Thank you for being an inspiration. Thank you, Dom. Yes. I really, I've already signed up for your free, free gift. Everybody that's listening, go to dombrighton.com and sign up. And that will be in the show links, so you don't have any kind of excuse. Just look in the show links. You'll Very find nice. it. It'll be right there. All right. So, Dom, thank you very much. Neo Positivity, glad to see you back in your thank normal you. space. Love Debbie you, T, all of our live streamers, and especially to our podcast listeners everywhere. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. We did it again, Walt. You didn't end the live stream yet. (laughs) I'm going to save you next time. I almost ended it this time. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it right now. (laughs)